computer domain. And here I've used the term metaphors and affordances to describe what it is that you need to be designing. <coughs> People are looking for creative ways to show hierarchies or other information structures. File cabinets and folders are an old idea, uh, but encyclopedias with articles, look at Encyclopedia Britannica online, shopping mall with stores, books with chapters, television with channels, museums with exhibits. Uh, there's lots of possibilities. There are richer possibilities instead of hierarchies which suggest a networked kind of environment. Uh, for the Library of Congress we've been talking about the doorways to the Library of Congress. You can come through multiple doors and still get all the information. One door by subject, author, or title. One door by media type. One door by chronology. One door by geography. One door by age of the user. Is it a child? Is it an adult? And each one of those doors still gives you access to all the information that's there, but gives you a different way of beginning your search. In other projects, we've designed the city of knowledge, where we had gates and different landmarks, different buildings for different kinds of information. In addition to those metaphors of the computer domain support tools or for information structures, there are other aspects of the computer domain like bookmarks, history stacks, maps, overviews, how do I get around, scroll bars, all those things are things the users have to learn. Other features of the uh, computer environment might be communications tools which would be accessible from the web email, bulletin boards, listservs, a variety of clever ideas are emerging of how people can communicate and participate in groups um, through these, these software tools. Uh, help and tours, uh, guides and introductions. I found a very nice CD-ROM lately called A Passion for Art about the Barnes Collection, Barnes Collection, which had multiple introductions an introduction about the computer domain, how to get around on the disk, an introduction to the history of the Barnes collection itself, an introduction to particular paintings. So they had nicely crafted this multiple level of the computer domain and various items in the hierarchy of information objects. The affordances, the ways to get around in the computer domain include string search, which we've talked about, and the design of the syntax of string search is also you know, a requirement for you. How do you lay out the dialog box? What features do you provide? Do you allow page turning in books? Next, previous, first, last. Same thing on a video. Do you have? Can you fast forward? Uh, can you jump to the end, jump to the beginning? Traverse a menu hierarchy. What are the commands for doing that? How do we follow a link by jumping? It's just, to me, a great pleasure to see on the World Wide Web this idea of the embedded menus, an idea we had developed in the early 80s for the Holocaust Museum's um, environment uh, of, uh, of clicking on something embedded in a paragraph rather than a numbered menu that follows it. And that's become a very widely used um, tool which is fundamental to the web environment. Overview strategies. On previous years, I've talked at great length about the need for visual overviews to show as much as possible. That map of Brazil is exactly that kind of overview. It gives you immediate understanding of what's in the database, what's not in the database. No error messages are necessary. You don't have to type a latitude and longitude and it says, sorry, that latitude and longitude is in Paraguay. We don't have those images. You can't make a mistake when you're clicking on an overview. Um, query previews are another basic idea that uh, we've developed uh, during the past year to allow for rapid network exploration. Instead of allowing general search by typing in commands, what you see on your query preview screen are a limited set of choices for the NASA environment, a world map broken into eight regions. You click on a region and it tells you how many data sets are for that region. You click on a time period, 1993, 1994, and it tells you by having a preview bar which goes back and forth to show how many are available. You click on sea surface temperature, methane, oxygen levels, etc. and immediately you know how many data sets there are. Those can be rapid, incremental, and reversible. They're highly dynamic and you get those in tenths of a second. 
when you see that you have a set of a reasonable size like 50 or 100, not zero, not 10,000, but 50 or 100, then you go out to the net, you retrieve the meta information about those, and you search in detail to get the ones you want. Okay? Query previews do put an extra burden on the websites to publish that volume table of contents, which lets you know the information. They put an extra burden on the clients, which have to download that. But in the world of Java applets, uh, we think that can become a very effective process. OK. Once you've done um, a query, you, I, I do think we can s get much stronger at providing better views of the results of a query, allowing users to reorder them and refine those queries. Um, session management is another area, um, which is part of the computer affordances. How do you keep track of which queries you've done? Can you go back in time and replay a query on another database? or vary it slightly and compare the results of two queries, right? Can I do two queries and then take intersections or unions of those queries? Can I extract and take home the results of a search um, and, or can I send it to somebody else? Do I annotate? Can I suggest repairs? I know about you, but lots of times when I browse systems, I find typos or mistakes. I like to be able to send a note to the maintainers and tell them, how about fixing this for the next time? Or improving the contents, okay? Communicate with fellow users. I think the idea of opening up the communications gateways to allow a more fluid environment where instead of one person being lonely on their own, you think of yourself as a community. Teachers can share lesson plans. Professionals can share results, publish information, have a discussion group. In my world of online scientific journals, Every journal article is also a listserv and a discussion group. Every article that's published automatically has a way for people to say, I read this, this is great, this is terrible, to comment on it, to ask questions. So papers, rather than being archival and dead, become alive and the source of discussion and a community of people who share a common interest. That's, to me, many opportunities. Finally, assistance is the other computer domain, getting online help, getting tours, guides of various sorts, other things that are your responsibility as designers to prepare. Finally, the creating the syntax for objects and actions. What's on the display? Do we have a small display or a large display? Can we show a lot? Do we use a small font or a large font? Are we going with monochrome only? Or do we insist on color? Do we assume slow or fast transmission? How do we lay things out? Grid, consistent style, consistent terminology, appropriate fonts and colors. What are the assumptions? In our design for the Library of Congress, I believe we will design for a rich environment with larger displays. We will facilitate small displays. We will facilitate access, I hope, by something you wear on your wrist, something that's tiny, the size of a pager that would let you browse the entire National Digital Library. Might be slower, might be a little harder to navigate, but it ought to be possible. Your system should be open to novel technologies. It should be possible to browse it by telephone. It might take a while to listen to all those menus or get the data by sound, but it ought to be possible. Your design of the cognitive structure of your information ought to be independent of the delivery of, of me mechanism, independent of the hardware. Okay, so therefore,